Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from TheWetPen.com, and as I mentioned in the last video, I just spent a few weeks in Europe, mostly in Austria, Innsbruck, Salzburg, Vienna, and also Slovenia. But I flew in and out of Switzerland, and I spent several days there too. This isn't going to be like my series of videos from Japan though. First of all, I got miserably sick about a week into the trip, so I couldn't really enjoy a lot of the things that I wanted to enjoy, and I couldn't do the work that I needed to do either, so that was disappointing. I did find a salamander once though, and that helped. But I also just didn't find the interesting inks and stationery that I did in Japan. So this will be a quick video, and it starts off in Zurich. There was one pen shop in Zurich that I knew I wanted to visit, and eventually I found it on a construction-riddled street in the shadow of the Fraumünster church in the Old Town. It's called Landolt Arbenz. Landolt Arbenz is a two-story shop with most of the pens on the larger upper story. They have most of the popular European and Japanese pens that you'd expect, but I wasn't going to buy a pen at Swiss prices, so I didn't spend much time looking at them. I did see these inks on a shelf, and I assumed that they were some sort of dip pen inks, and I ignored them at the time. But in fact, this brand is Abraxas, and they hand make a lot of different inks, and a bunch of them are actually fountain pen friendly. Downstairs, there were also a few pens, but it was mostly dedicated to accessories. But I did find what I was looking for down there, back in this doorway. Between the shelves of Sailor and Pilot inks, we find the Landolt Arbenz inks. There were about 40 of them in a wide range of colors, and I'd heard that they were good quality inks, so I wanted to get a few. Now let me take a moment to thank the wonderful woman who was working behind the counter that day. First of all, for speaking high German to me, since my ear for Swiss dialect was still pretty rusty, but also for showing me the store's swatch books of all of the different colors. She explained that the Landolt Arbenz inks are actually made by Diamine, the British company. Now, I really like Diamine inks. They've got a great range of colors and properties, and they're reliably good for actually writing, but Diamine inks are generally inexpensive, about $7 per 80 milliliter bottle, while the 50 milliliter bottles of Landolt Arbenz inks were 22 Swiss francs. That's about 25 US dollars. So I decided to buy only one, and I just picked the first one that I liked the look of. It's called Mare Grün, which means sea green. Although when I bought it, I was actually thinking about the color of the Limont River that runs through the city into Lake Zurich. Anyway, this is the bottle of ink. It came in a clear plastic package. Let me take that off. And here we go. This is a beautiful tall glass bottle, and it has a nice and simple but classy label. Not bad. As usual, I'm going to swatch this ink on a few different papers. I'll start with my color ring, but then I'll swatch it on some pure white rhodia, and some slightly warmer irofol, and on some ivory midori. And this looks like a really nice dark teal. I can't seem to stop collecting this color. The color is fairly similar on the color ring and the rhodia, though it's more evenly dark on the rhodia. And as usual, it's slightly more blue on the irofol and more green on the midori. And there's a little bit of reddish sheen on both of the Japanese papers. And now for a couple of writing samples. This one was written with a relatively broad architect nib on Tomoe River paper, and there's a nice amount of shading. Then this is a fine nib in the Magna Carta pen from the previous video, and as you'd expect from a fine nib, 
the color is a little harder to make out and there's not as much shading. Here, I wrote with a broad Opus 88 nib on some bank paper, and this looks really good too. And this is how it looks on Midori. I don't have every color of diamine ink, but I thought I'd show you how this one compares to a couple that I do own. Here I have a little bottle of diamine teal and another of Aurora Borealis. Since my regular swabs don't fit into these bottles, I'll have to use some Q-tips this time. I'll start with the teal. And now here's the sea green. And to me, that looks a little bit bluer than the teal, although they're relatively close. And here's the Aurora Borealis. And this one looks a little lighter and greener, maybe? They all look a bit more similar as they dry down. All in all, a pretty good ink and a nice souvenir from Zurich. About three weeks later, I found myself in Vienna, Austria, a much larger city. I had heard that in some shops it was possible for Americans to buy fountain pens without the high value added tax, making them relatively affordable. So I started thinking about buying a couple of nice expensive pens to take home from a trip that was otherwise a bit of a disaster. And everyone that I heard from on the matter pointed me to a shop called Meyer und Fessler. They had a few expensive looking pens in the window of the collector variety, but when I stepped into the shop and asked permission to take a few photos, as I always do in Europe, for the first time, the man behind the counter very politely said that photos were not allowed. And for some reason, that was enough for me to change my mind about buying pens there. So I turned around and went off to look for some ice cream. And that was the extent of my fountain pen explorations in Europe this time, with the exception of a Libro, I suppose, which had some Lamis, but nothing unusual. Anyway, I hope that some of you found it interesting nonetheless, and I will be back soon with a couple of videos about fountain pens, including the epitome that I mentioned in the previous video. So make sure that you've subscribed if you want to catch those. Take care out there, everyone, and enjoy your fountain pens and inks.